Hello everyone, this is Fiona welcoming you to Schoolnet and Microsoft's webinar series of past winners in the Partners in Learning Forum. Tonight we have Chris Gatsy from the Hill Extension in Gauteng telling you about his award-winning project Zero Tolerance for Bribery Campaign. Over to you Chris. Thank you very much, Fiona. I'm pleased uh, to be part of uh, the webinar uh, presenters for the Innovative Educators. Uh, my name is Chris Gatsi. Um, I was at General Smarts High School the time I did this project, uh, Zero Tolerance for Bribery Campaign with my learners. But presently now I'm at uh, the Hill High School in the Hill Extension, uh, Johannesburg. I'm sorry for the error on my PowerPoint slide there. I did not edit uh, um, this presentation on time due to circumstances beyond my control. Uh, I'm really happy to welcome uh, those on board. Uh, Nith, uh, thank you very much for coming on board. I hope we have a very wonderful presentation. Uh, I'm an award winner in the 2010 Microsoft Innovative Teacher Forum, now known as the Partners in Learning Forum. I uh, won the category which used to be known as Innovation in Community. It has recently changed now to learning beyond the classroom. I'm also a Microsoft Office Specialist, Forensic Auditor in the Fraud Examiner. Um, I'd like to compliment the work for SchoolNet before I start presenting my slide, as well as uh, Microsoft, uh, for exposing us to, 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 to great um, uh, pieces of work, professional development as teachers, where we learn, where we collaborate, and. Um, be able to grow um, as well as um, improve the learning environment within our classrooms. Right, I'm going to move on to my second slide. You can see there, um, I've got some few clips from the project that I did with my learners from General Smart High School in 2010. You can see uh, I've got some learners there on the computers where they were researching, using computers to research got a photo again where we engaged with the parents uh, to foster learning beyond the classroom. Because now I think you would agree with me that um, uh, learners are abroad, it's monotonous for them just to learn things that are not practically oriented. We'd like learners to, to, to learn the real life situations they will remember better. Uh, before I go on, I would start with a quotation uh, from Benjamin Franklin. He says, uh, teach me, I may remember, tell me, uh, I, I, I may learn, and then he says, involve me, then I'll definitely learn. So it means that uh, we have got a shift in pedagogy, which I'll explain later on, uh, whereby we are leaving the old conventional way of teaching and engaging in an interactive kind of teaching that involves the learners. It's like a learner-centric approach rather than a conventional um, teacher-centered approach where the teacher is the source of information for everything. The students depend entirely on the teacher for instructions and for pace. Now, um, with uh, 21st century learning, uh, whatever project you do, uh, you should uh, engage the learners. Let them do the part. Let them get involved so that it's not a teacher-centric uh, kind of learning. Right? My project was called Zero Tolerance for Bribery Campaign, as earlier on alluded to. Um, the learning areas, uh, life orientation, grades 9 and 10, ages 14 to 16, is appearing on your screens. Objectives, to equip learners with an understanding of the values and responsibilities in, in the South African Constitution and human rights, as well as share such knowledge with the aid of ICT. To raise community awareness against bribery, to encourage learners to engage in positive citizen participation, as well as to reduce rampant levels of bribery in the community from grassroots. Um, there is a short description there. Uh, I think uh, it will be made uh, provided to you later on. Uh, software tools that were used included Microsoft Movie Maker, Cyberlink Power Director, Publisher, PowerPoint, Word, Excel, SongSmith, AutoCollage, and various online tools such as CF Sites um, for free hosting as well as Facebook. I think amongst those software tools, you realize something then uh, that it is not only about the technology. You can work with whatever you have. You can improvise within your teaching environments. 
You don't need to have that expensive technology to be able to engage with the learners uh, in your teaching practice. But with the little basic uh, ICT, you can be able to have wonderful and interesting lessons within the classroom. I welcome uh, another um, participant, um, um, Mokudu Mochara. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm moving on to my next uh, slide. Uh, there I was trying to show my planning and management. Firstly, I started with the motivation of the project. Uh, the following are some of the fundamental values of the South African Constitution. Uh, equality, no discrimination, human dignity, and justice. And my learners, after I had tasked them under the Ubuntu project, the grade 10 learners, to go into the community and try and find things that go against the South African Constitution, they identified amongst other things crime, um, the domestic violence, and I was amazed with this one on bribery, where a learner came forth and said, uh, look, uh, if someone bribes, the uh, equality goes away, let's say it's when they kill, then those people bribe, then they get uh, first preference. Uh, there's uh, discrimination there because of bribery. Uh, we can talk of uh, human dignity in general within the society. It's lost because of bribery. Um, you can also look at the justice delivery system that Lena had uh, researched quite well within the community. Um, they said, um, look at justice. If a judge is bribed and a criminal is let to go scot free, then uh, we have got problems within the society because of bribery. So I went on to say our young people have to face social ills and injustices such as bribery as they grow up. Meaning, if it was identified by a kid, Meaning also it's a, it's a menace that is affecting our communities. So these kids uh, used their cell phones, uh, they used their recorders uh, to, to go and research from the co within the community, sorry, um, what the people think about uh, bribery in the South African constitution. Uh, my third slide there appearing, my assessment standards are to state them. Um, in accordance with the Department of Education National Curriculum Statement at that time. Um, and I also fused the ICT integration, how ICT came in. Can I emphasize at this point that the emphasis is not on the periodity of the tools. You don't have to have a wide range of tools in order for a project to be innovative. Actually, what you need um, is even to have just a few tools, but use them uh, innovatively. Think outside the box. Do something a little bit unique uh, whilst addressing 21st century skills, uh, which include, um, got a short list with me here, uh, learning beyond the classroom for your learners. They should not just learn within the classroom environment where you are teaching, uh, whether on an electronic whiteboard or on a chalkboard, where you are just delivering as if you are presenting a speech. Uh, you'd need um, to, 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 to fuse within the curriculum uh, aspects whereby the learners go and mix up firstly with the school community, then uh, also the wider community where they come from. They, 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 they feel involved, uh, they would like it, it challenges them. So that would uh, enhance the innovativeness of, of the teaching uh, process there. Uh, also there is collaboration. You need your learners to collaborate with other learners. We work in teams. It's boring for them to always come within the classroom, they sit. Um, then they you just deliver a lecture. They need to be to, we need to change a pedagogy teaching style whereby uh, they can be put in groups sometimes. You give them project based learning to give them projects that they can go and do at home, just like this zero tolerance for private campaign that they engaged in. Um, I'll race through this one a knowledge building, a critical thinking, and technology is also part of 21st century skills. I think you can see from my screen there. Uh, I had a rubric for my grade nines. Unfortunately, I, I might not be able to click it and open it for you. And I've got sample in-class activities that I did with them. Because as you're presenting your project for the uh, Partners in Learning Forum, it is good also that um, you, fuse, you fuse those documents um, to support your project, to show that it was in line with the curriculum. Because we're not saying, let's say, the lesson or a project that deviates from the curriculum it should be in line with the curriculum with all those learning outcomes, etc., etc., but done in an engaging, exciting, and interactive way. Uh, can I safely move on to the sec uh, other slide? If you've got questions, please, um, you can type them. I'll be able to see them, and I'll be responding to those questions um, um, promptly. 
Right, um, let's look at the products that uh, my learners did during this project. I told you they used Cyberlink Power Director. They made a platform free uh, DVD. Can, uh, you can agree with me that a DVD is so affordable, a blank one is about 3 rand. Then they just refilled ink uh, onto a Canon printer. Then they used Cyberlink Power Director to, 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 to come up with a nice uh, multimedia video where they were interviewing the parents during a parents' evening, doing an anti-bribery signature campaign, online polls that they did. You can see there also to the right, uh, a website is appearing. It is also a product that the learners did with my help. I just uh, uh, demonstrated an example to them. Then they went on to use their own creativity. But you see that um, whilst the learners are involved in this type of project-based learning, um, they learn project management skills in terms of uh, timing, arranging themselves, giving each other tasks. They learn those project management skills. They also learn to research practically. Then they also learn to be analytical. They don't need just to learn to go on to the internet and go on Google, uh, be it on a Bing, to research and uh, take things as they are. They need to synthesize, they need to analyze that information um, and come up with their own amicable solutions, come up with their own products, uh, though also they need to be uh, taught not to plagiarize, they need to, to be able to acknowledge sources whatsoever. Um, okay, uh, uh, Makudu, uh, for the website uh, we used charityfocussites.org, cfsites.org, but I've got a uh, variety of other tools that I've uh, come across that I'm going to share with you uh, later on such as uh, Weebly.com, uh, there are many of them. I'll show you, I've got a slide there that would list the tools that you can pick if you'd like, and you can even go a step further, and you can share those ones with, uh, with, with, with other colleagues. Weebly.com, thank you, Fiona, for emphasizing on that one. Right, um, so there is um, grade 10 project assessment guidelines and the methods of assessment that I used, the uh, Word and PowerPoint, um, a few documents then. Um, can I safely move on? If we all agree. Um, I've been struggling getting this first time because all the time I use my phone, it does not have Adobe. Okay, thank you, brother. Okay, I'm getting your message. Thank you for using your laptop or whatever other gadget you're using so that we can uh, continue with this presentation. Thank you very much. Um, Appearing on your screen right now uh, is an auto collage uh, made by the learners on their activities. Um, this auto collage shows you um, members from the Department of Home Affairs where I'm pointing right now, uh, with my, my kids from uh, General Smart High School, with some flyers that they made using Publisher, which is a software that is uh, usually available with many schools. Um, uh, members of home affairs were uh, signing against bribery there. Uh, the kids there motivating each other singing a song against bribery in the computer laboratory. Uh, parents receiving some pamphlets being asked what they think about bribery during a parents' evening. Uh, kids working on computers, researching, designing their website, etc., etc. So I put these pictures to present them to, to, the, to the jury during uh, the Microsoft Innovative Educator Forum in 2010. Right. Right, that banner appearing there is a banner that um, is indicating about 400 or so signatures, pardon, about 400 or so signatures that way um, signed by parents and uh, also by members of the community, members from the Department of Home Affairs about uh, bribery, going against bribery. So you see this campaign, the learners went in to learn beyond the classroom. They mixed up with people from the Department of Home Affairs, they mixed up with parents, actually doing a, a, a what can I say, a campaign that has got a social motive for change within the society. So at the same time, while they were learning about Ubuntu, they were also fusing and collaborating with their communities. We received some letters from the police complimenting uh, the efforts of the learners who had visited them. So I put it also um, as a support document there. Then I put my reflections. It is very important that when you are using, um, sorry, when you are presenting your project, 
you need to reflect on whatever happened, you need to evaluate your project, you need to be honest with yourself, there are successes, there are also hiccups that you have faced within your project. It will be wonderful and nice for you to actually uh, state those in your teacher reflections. Uh, you could pick up also some few comments that came from the learners there. You could also pick up um, comments from other teachers, your colleagues, uh, professionally, because definitely they would have motivated you, you would have worked with them, as we don't work in isolation. Right, uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, they are just uh, telling the context of the school. General Smart High School, a public school with more than uh, about 1, 000, over 1,800 uh, uh, learners. Very big public school indeed, multiracial. Um, also, uh, stating uh, the computer facilities that we do have, um, the challenges that we have in the school, and also a little bit a uh, history of, uh, about myself and where I worked and taught before. So, actually, when we enter the Partners in Learning Forum uh, competition, they'll give you a template where they ask what you should um, actually respond to to present your project. So, we have a wider platform even to add some slides um, that you think are relevant. But there is uh, so definitely some limit in terms of the size uh, that should be uploaded for this competition. It's a very wonderful platform. Uh, should I say, um, I had actually dropped entering this competition. Uh, the last day, uh, my facilitator, Case Naidu from uh, Sidibeng East District, uh, came in uh, and said, No, Chris, you should submit your project. I can see it's wonderful. I said, No, 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 I'm doubting. I don't have the time. I've got a lot of marking. I bought some uh, lesson plans to, to, to put in place. Um, after he motivated me, he tried to speak to Megan Redmayer, uh, the programs manager, national programs manager at Schoolmate, who gave me uh, some few hours extension for me to be able to submit my project. Then I said, God, let me just do this. Then I submitted and summarized my project. Uh, to my surprise, colleagues, um, I was nominated um, among the top 20 for the nationals. Um, and uh, we got um, good hosting at the Pactonian uh, Hotel in Johannesburg. We enjoyed, we enjoyed nice meals uh, to say. Uh, also to add on, we enjoyed uh, the company of other very innovative teachers such that we learned a lot from them other than just um, enjoying the facilities, the prizes, etc. Then I won at national level and after winning at national level, I got exposed well at, at the Pan-African level uh, having to meet a uh, gentleman like Solomon Asia um, and a uh, lady from um, Madagascar, Mauritius, etc. We had wonderful uh, projects. Uh, I learned a lot and I took uh, a lot of those skills back home to General Smart High School. So I'd like to encourage you to actually enter the Partners in Learning Network. It's not just about the winning, it's about the exposure that you get at a very good um, level and also the networks that you would create that will make you a more innovative teacher per se. Right, let me just move to the next uh, slide. I hope, uh, Fiona, that time am I allocated or what time am I still having? Because I've got a lot to share here. So I'd like to know what time is allocated. Could you, thank you very much, Fiona. Okay, I've been given the go ahead list. Uh, she becomes angry and uh, puts me off there. Right. Uh, let me emphasize on the shift in pedagogy. Uh, I've put the conventional methods being cancelled out. You can see on conventional methods, the students entirely depend on the teacher for information. The teacher is the source of information. That's the old type of learning, that the teacher knows everything. You'll be surprised that these kids know a lot of things. They have said, um, I was surprised to find out that bribery can be something that goes against the South African constitution because of the research that these kids do on their computers, on their cell phones, on these social networks and the like. Um, on conventional, again, we see that they depend on the teacher to set out tasks for them. But when we are now talking of uh, innovation, uh, we want to give uh, the, the, the kids autonomy, independence. You give them the guidelines, you give them the assessment criteria, then you let them have the autonomy to go and research, to, 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 to give tasks for themselves. Um, at their own pace. Uh, they depend on the teacher for pace, assistance and answers. This one I can explain it because I'm also a math teacher basically, though I was also teaching life orientation at that time. Um, I've used a software called KamiMath. You can scroll forth and backwards um, whenever um, 
um, you are working. So we've got those slow learners, we've got those fast learners also. So we need to accommodate all of them. Otherwise, if we just move on, um, it, it would affect the other learners. So with uh, uh, computer or um, ICT aided uh, kind of learning, you see that the learner that has finished can quickly say next and move on to the next uh, topic. Uh, the learner that hasn't finished uh, or didn't understand the previous topic can say back and look at that assessment until they understand, meaning everyone is catered for them. So it's so interesting um, uh, how technology can ease our work as teachers, uh, how it can even make our life uh, more interesting within the classroom. We'd even enjoy to be in the classroom than to be at home uh, per se. Uh, let me just look at ICT-driven methods. It encourages a learner-centered approach. Sorry for the noise. I'm still at school, so uh, I'm using one of the classrooms here. Right. It encourages a learner-centered approach. Um, we are much concentrating on the learner rather than on the teacher. The teacher is now changing from a teacher to a mentor, someone kind of a mentor. It develops 21st century skills, I've mentioned those ones, critical thinking, um, collaboration, learning beyond the classroom, learning in challenging contexts, uh, technology, etc., etc. You need to research about those 21st century skills I think some of you have um, um, come across um, um, Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, I think it's one of uh, the, 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 the charts, or can I say, um, that, that presents to us these uh, 21st century skills, though in, in another, another language. Like students can support their own learning with greater independence than feeling pressure on the teacher. I've explained that one. So I'm going to be moving uh, on to um, my next slide here. Um, examples of tools um, Mokudu. Uh, I think you are much interested in that one. Um, but let me emphasize again that it's not the tools that make the project innovative. It is how you address those 21st century skills that I have spoken about. It is your teaching style. How different is it? How engaging? How exciting is it to the learners? That that's what uh, counts much, right? Uh, Scratch and Alice. Uh, this one, uh, those teaching IT could have come across it. We have used it at Northwest University uh, sometime when we were um, trying to motivate other pre-service teachers on how they can enhance their uh, classroom teaching. Uh, Sketch and Alice are 3D animation tools. You can use them, um, especially primary school teachers. Um, you can see animals there like a duck, uh, like a cat. You can make sounds with them. You can make audio with them and create a nice story in 3D that can even teach the kids sounds made by those animals, etc., um, etc. Et so for your animation there, you can use that one. I've seen Sari Kimasgrave's uh, um, project that she did, uh, Spray the Sunshine. She's one of our past winners. It was wonderful. She had something on animation where they were uh, trying to show how we can help uh, the physically disadvantaged, the disabled people um, with the kids. And they did some animation. Uh, Scratch can also help you do such. Uh, what I'm not aware of in the meantime is whether it can be able to transfer it to a phone mobile platform. Uh, but what I know with the computer, you can have a uh, nice animations that you can play within the classroom. You can even make a lesson for them using those animations. So primary school teachers, something to use for you there. Very easy to use, does not need expertise. Even a novice person can use it. Um, hot potatoes, some of you could have met it before. Uh, I'm using it and my learners are uh, getting uh, interested and in asking me where the new puzzle is coming. Um, um, the puzzles here, uh, you can create them with word potatoes. You can ask questions like, for uh, example, in mathematics, I can put answers first, like even a uh, odd, a uh, prime. Then uh, I ask word potatoes quickly generate a puzzle for me. Then I put clues that for even made, I put a question like uh, numbers that you will not leave a remainder when divided by two. So it will definitely create a nice puzzle that you can quickly ask the learners to paste in their books and go and do it as homework so that they master the concepts so they will get to enjoy it. They can also use it on the web. It can provide a facility whereby it makes it on the web. So if they access it, if you put it on a website, they can answer online and then it will mark for them when they say done, it will tick for them and give them solutions later on. So um, I think you would actually enjoy hot potatoes. It's a very good uh, um, piece of tool 
uh, which you can make quizzes with it, uh, crosswords and uh, matching uh, and the like and the like etc right i'm moving on if you've got questions colleagues uh, we are free to type them i'll be answering them as i go right i've listed a number of other uh, software tools some of them have learned them from other innovative teachers some of them have come across them Voki for education um you can find it on ww i'm going to type it just now uh, ww dot voki dot com um just forgive me with my spellings uh, I, I'm, I'm not very good at english there in terms of spellings www.voki.com if you use voki sometimes you've got flu you don't want to speak in the classroom uh, you can type um, um whatever text you want to convert it to to audio so you can you just press your laptop Voki starts speaking for you in the classroom it can be just an appetizer to your classroom there are also many facilities that you find under Voki, like lesson plans if you log on then register you'll be able to access easy lesson plans examples then you can use all those kind of good animations so that is Voki. then mouse mischief um this is a very good gadget i presented it uh uh, on Saturday at my new school here, I'm now at the Hill High School, other than at um, General Smart High School, it was a very good school. Um, I just changed uh, for some few reasons, that's known to me. Let me just uh, explain how I explained mouse mischief here. You can use multiple mice uh, for mouse mischief. Uh, it's not a tool that comes separately. When you install it, it gives you an add-on in Microsoft PowerPoint 2007 or higher. Um, with that aid, you can be able to put quiz uh, questions, um, multiple choice questions uh, using a uh, mouse machine. Then the kids can interactively use their mice. Each mice will be given a specific shape or um, 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 an apple, an orange, a banana to say, for example, so that they know their groups. So you can use wireless mice. Uh, you can use um, a, a USB hub to connect a number of mice. Um, and I'm happy that our school uh, just got sponsorship from somewhere so they're buying the, uh, those mice and laptops for us to use you don't need a lot of things, those mice your laptop, your projector then kids can get engaged they can answer questions, you see who's first to answer just like mathematics.co.za uh, where they compete in terms of speed so mouse mischief, very good interactive kind of software uh, Windows Live, I put it in green there because I'm going to show you a project a uh, short one, very fast that are done in Windows Live. Weebly, uh, brother, uh, sister, not sure, Mokudu, Machaba, uh, Weebly.com for websites, CF sites for websites. There are a lot of them. Um, just look at them. You can Google them and then go to their sites. www.weebly.com, www.cfsites.org. Um, I hope my time is not running out. Okay, fine. In Cyber Info Director, I would prefer it compared to Movie Maker. I'm sorry to say if uh, I've got Microsoft uh, sales people online. Um, it's got a little bit of advantage. It's easy to use. Uh, you can put objects in. The kids can easily learn it and use it for making their multimedia videos. The Movie Maker is also very good in terms of standard. Song Smith, the learners, you know, repeat assertion uh, in marketing. If someone um, uh, knows about um, something or repeat something several times they are able to remember it better so we can have songs there's a project that was done by Afiza uh, on polygons the kids were asked to sing something on the different types of polygons they sing polygons polygons it is a wonderful project that they did with songsmith so they would remember because of repeat assertion uh, adobe connect the one we are using right now for this meeting god skype i know you all know it whatsapp it's a very good tool also, you can record audio and send it to your learners, they might ask questions um, um, on WhatsApp, then you can answer them in audio and send it through. Mix it, there is a very good one for mathematics there and other things, um, go to math mathematics, um, multiple choice questions. Movie Maker, I've spoken about it, proximity promoter, you can use it with Bluetooth, your kids can just bring their cell phones. You type in, then you can be able to send their homework onto their cell phones if they just say accept. Uh, WordPress for your blogs, Moodle, um, also very good portal there that you can use for chatting, interacting with your kids, putting content online, Joomla, even the Department of Education, the other government departments are now using Joomla. Photo story, primary school teachers, very good. They can make a photo story, auto collage, mixing photos, 
made it in worldwide telescope to be able to navigate um, the space uh, from their computer when they are online. But Windows Live example quickly, that's my last uh, short description, maybe in two minutes. It's a virtual learning community called Live at Edu. And Microsoft and um, um, uh, their partners are able to uh, generate usernames and passwords for you. I think Fiona will tell you further about that one. Uh, you can be able to save, to share, and collaborate and communicate using Windows Live. I'm starting a good project here, the school, but there's another one in General Smart High School, which I'm doing, going to quickly show you. Uh, the students here can collaborate among themselves and with the teachers. They can send messages to each other. Um, uh, you can have a group email address so you can send to all the kids. They've got a calendar incorporated that will remind them of work that is falling due. There is the project. Each student has got an email address online. Then I put their mark sheets. I put notes. I put tasks and suggested solutions. Teachers, uh, school management can access that, that, that stuff if they've joined the group. So we've got about 25 gigabytes of SkyDrive. It's like cloud computing. Uh, I think you'd enjoy this. Parents will no longer need to come uh, for parents' evening. So you won't be irritated. They can check their stuff online. Each kid can also have this one personal 25 gigabytes of uh, uh, drive space. There is a screenshot of uh, uh, what I was doing at General Smarts. The files shared there, the members with done what, uh, appearing on your screens, colleagues. Uh, there are some of the files, grade 10 e -mark sheets. So they can open when they log in, even from their cell phones, as long as it supports Word and Excel documents. Right, small clips on we, uh, Windows Live. I called it Mets Blue at Smarts. There is a worksheet opened now. Um, you can also be able to sync between computers or use SkyDrive for your documents. So basically, that's what I wanted to say, colleagues. I wanted to share with you. I got my first flight to Kenya, Mombasa. I never boarded a flight before. It was interesting. That was my first one. And I got a second one to Cape Town, but I'd like to encourage you to, to enter the Partners in Learning uh, Network Forum. Also to join all other uh, communities like Schoolmate, uh, Partners in Learning Network, because you get to get tools as they come out, you get to collaborate with other teachers and learn from them and also share your expertise. Um, that's what I had to share. I'm going to send it back uh, to Fiona now. That was Chris Getty from the Hill Extension in Gauteng telling us about his project Zero Tolerance for Bribery Campaign. Thank you for sharing with us Chris and thank you for listening in everyone. Good night. <laughs>